Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today is going to be a continuation of the P. Diddy lawsuits. We are on lawsuit number three, I think, but they're not in succinct order. Um, and so I'm just reading them as I receive them. This particular lawsuit was filed on May 22nd or 23rd, so not too long ago. Um, I do believe if it's in sequential order, it is lawsuit number six seven or possibly eight. Don't get me wrong. There are so many lawsuits, but as always, I'm going to read the lawsuit and then we are going to save the discussion for the final video. Um, but you are free to generate your own comments and thoughts and leave them in the comment section below. So let's jump right into it. The woman who is suing Sean Combs, AKA P Diddy is doing so under the NYC victims of gender motivated violence protection act. The NYC Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Protection Act is specific for survivors of gender motivated violence, allowing them to sue their abusers regardless of when the abuse occurred. The NYC Gender Motivated Violence Act revives any claims against a party who commits, directs, enables, participates in, or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence motivated by gender has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. The appellate division has held the sexual assault is, a, is an act of gender motivated violence under the law as coerced sexual activity is dehumanizing and fear inducing. Malice or ill will based on gender is apparent from the alleged commission of the act itself. So now we're going to talk about the parties of the lawsuit. The defendant, Mr. Combs, P. Diddy, a.k.a. Puff Daddy or Diddy, is a Grammy awarded musician, rapper and producer. In 1992, P. Diddy founded Defendant's Bad Boy Records. In 2008, P. Diddy was the first male rapper to get a start on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2022, Forbes estimated that P. Diddy is one of the wealthiest hip-hop artists in America and that his net worth is over $1 billion. Upon information and belief, P. Diddy has a long history of committing physical and sexual violence against women and men as documented in publicly available lawsuits and extensive media coverage. On November 16, 2023, Cassie Ventura, an artist signed onto Bad Boy Records, filed a suit in the U.S. District Court of Southern District of New York, alleging that Combs provided her with copious amount of drugs before sexually assaulting her. On November 23, 2023, Joy Dickerson Neal filed a suit in the Supreme Court of New York, New York County, alleging that Combs drugged her sexually assaulted her, and filed a revenge corn tape of his assault. On November 23, 2023, Liza Gardner filed a suit in the Supreme Court of New York, New York County, alleging that Combs and Aaron Hall sexually assaulted her when she was a minor. On December 6, 2023, a Jane Doe filed a suit in the U.S. Court of the Southern District of New York, alleging that when she was a minor, she was Graped by multiple people, by Combs, Harvey Pierre, and a third unnamed assailant. On February 26, 2024, Rodney Jones filed a, filed a suit in the U.S. State's District Court of the Southern District of New York, alleging that Combs sexually assaulted him and provided laced alcohol beverages to minors. The Defendant's Bad Boy Records in 1992, Combs founded Bad Boy Records, a record label which has sold over 5 million, 500 million records, and where he produced records by Mary J. Blige, The Notorious B.I.G., and Usher, Defendant Universal Music Group Incorporated. On February 6, 2003, Combs signed a distribution deal with Universal Records, now Universal Music Group, for Defendant's Bad Boy Records. From 2003 to 2005 and 2009 to present, Universal Music Group has and continues to distribute Bad Boy Records catalog. Sean John Clothing, LLC. In 1998, Combs founded Sean John, which has retail sales of over $450 million. 
As CEO and president of the company, Defendant Combs was representing Sean John when he attended the Miss Fashion Week dinner where he met the plaintiff. All right, now we're on the factual allegations. Plaintiff begins her modeling career. At the age of 17, the plaintiff won MTV's inaugural mo model mission on December 5th, 1998, a televised modeling competition akin to Miss America, and was awarded a modeling contract with IMG. Shortly thereafter, plaintiff's career took off. Plaintiff modeled for a Tommy Hilfiger jeans campaign. Plaintiff was also featured in Macy's catalog, Elle, Cosmopolitan, and Mademoiselle magazines. Plaintiff also made appearances in television and film program, such as MTV's Total Request Live, better known as TRL, Fashionably Loud, True Life, and a movie with Joan Rivers. Furthermore, Plaintiff had international modeling gigs in Germany and Australia. In 2003, when Plaintiff was 22 years old, a fashion designer invited Plaintiff to attend a Men's Fashion Week event held at, let's see, Cipriani Downtown. Located at 376 West Broadway, New York, New York. At the time, Plaintiff was engaged in modeling gigs in Miami, Florida, and flew to New York for the event. The designer told Plaintiff that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct Plaintiff's appearance as she sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. For instance, the designer instructed Plaintiff to go to Elizabeth Arden to get a root touch to get a root touch up to ensure it was platinum blonde. The designer also scheduled a stylist to put in hair extensions for plaintiff. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood and a translucent chiffon beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag, and jewelry encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from the night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Soon thereafter, plaintiff took a car to, let's see, where is it again? Cipriani downtown, where the designer was dining with Combs and other guests. Plaintiff felt little control over the events as she was directed what to do and put on display for the others in attendance. For instance, plaintiff sat down at an empty seat next to the designer, but he insisted that she sit across from Combs instead. Once seated, Combs made a very public display of coming on to plaintiff in a sexually suggestive manner, which continued throughout the dinner. For others to hear, Combs bestowed compliments on plaintiff by stating, for example, that she was beautiful and that her eyes were gorgeous. Later, at a more intimate volume, Combs told plaintiff was going to make it a big day as a model. Combs went on to tell Plaintiff that he had power in the industry and was going to help her advance her career. Combs provided Plaintiff with his phone number as a good gesture of good faith and in his promises to help her. Throughout their interaction, Combs were, was flirtatious, bordering on leering as he leaned across the table towards her. Combs also plied Plaintiff with alcohol throughout the dinner as he repeatedly refilled her glass with wine. Combs asked Plaintiff, to call him a bit later, plaintiff felt confused, but hopeful that Combs would fulfill his promise to help her. Later that night, Combs requested plaintiff to come to see his studio located at 321 West 44th Street in New York, New York. Plaintiff felt assured that she would be with others at the studio rather than alone in a personal residence. When plaintiff arrived, she found that Combs and several other men seated together. She found that they were passing around a bottle of Hennessy and joints. After plaintiff sat down, one of Combs' associates asked her, do you smoke, Mary Jane? To which she responded affirmatively. Combs' associate replied, you never had Mary Jane like this before. Plaintiff later came to understand that Combs had laced the joint with a narcotic or other intoxicating substance. Combs passed her the joint and plaintiff took a hit, which felt very powerful. Although plaintiff insisted that she had enough after that, Combs pressured her to consume more alcohol and marijuana by telling her that she was acting too uptight. Plaintiff felt as if she was floating. Seeing Plaintiff was very intoxicated, Combs demanded Plaintiff follow him and he physically led Plaintiff to the bedroom. In the bathroom, Combs forced herself on Plaintiff and began kissing her without her consent. Combs then shoved her head down to his crotch before com commanding her to suck it. Plaintiff refused, but Combs pushed her head down 
and forced her to perform oral on him. As she was being assaulted, plaintiff felt panic and physically sick. Afterwards, Comb let plaintiff back into the studio. Upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff was awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. As her consciousness returned, plaintiff realized that she had been sexually assaulted by Combs. Plaintiff felt humiliated and traumatized and without recourse. Following the assault, plaintiff's modeling opportunities quickly began to dwindle and then evaporated entirely. Upon information and belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted to unalive herself and was hospitalized. Everywhere plaintiff looked, she was reminded of Combs' assault as Combs was in inescapable presence in music, television, and film. In the ensuing years, plaintiff has also experienced alcohol and drug addiction as she attempted to cope with the emotional trauma of being assaulted. Plaintiff has also experienced intimacy issues as she struggles to maintain emotional and sexual relationships with men. Plaintiff was also married from approximately 2006 to 2010. However, her marriage fell apart and she had a mental breakdown precipitated by memories of the assault. Combs' assault has altered the trajectory of plaintiff's career, denying her a successful and lucrative career in the modeling and film industries. To this day, plaintiff experienced bouts of depression, anxiety, body image issues, feelings of worthlessness, and intimate issues because of Combs' assault. Plaintiff is a woman of faith, and when she saw news coverage of the lawsuits from Ms. Cassie Ventura, Ms. Dickerson Neal, and others, she knew she had a moral obligation to speak up. Plaintiff prayed to God before bringing this lawsuit as she feared further violence and or retaliation from defendant Combs, but ultimately decided that she needed to speak her truth. Plaintiff seeks justice for herself and for any other of Combs' victims. So this particular individual has requested a jury trial for the pending lawsuit. And so we will keep our ear to the streets to see what is in store for this woman and P. Diddy with these growing lawsuits. I um, hope that you guys leave your comments and your thoughts below and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.